Okay, so this is paragraph 5D, the unitary method in percentage. So let's have a look at an example and try to understand what this method is all about. Michelle and Brigitte own a business. Brigitte receives 25% of the profits each month. Last month, she received $2,080. How can she work out the total profit made by the business last month? Now, here some students might be familiar with other tricks where they take 25% and get to 100% quite easily. For example, we just multiply by four. But here we're going to introduce ourselves to a different method, which is useful, especially when we have strange numbers. So let me explain. In this method, the unitary method, we find what 1% is first. Unit, unitary comes from one. It comes from unit. That's why we call it the unitary method. So we first find what 1% is, and then we simply multiply by 100% to find the whole amount. So in this case, if 25% is equal to 2,080, what we have to do is simply divide it by 25 to get started. So we say, okay, 25% is equal to 2,080. So what would be 1%? Well, that would be 2,080 divided by 25. Needless to say, we likely need a calculator for this process. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we have 2008. Ah, yes, don't get confused by this. We know that 100% of uh, an amount is what we're looking for. 25% of that amount is 2080. We're not looking for 25% of 2080. We're not looking for 1% of 2080. We're looking for what 1000% is. Yes, we said that previously, we said that is another method. Yes, but today we're looking at the unitary method, which is particularly useful when we have strange percentages. Oh! Right, in this case, the easiest method would be to multiply by four. But we are doing something else. Yes, we are going to use this method in problems where you can't do the little trick that you just mentioned. So let's see. Firstly, in this method, the unitary method, we take this amount, 2080, and divide by 25. So that gives us 83.2. Great. So we know that 1% is equal to 83.2. So how do we get now 100%? We multiply by 100. So if 1% is equal to 83.2, then 100% will be 100 times 83.2. So that will give us 8,320. And this would be dollars. So from this, we get 100% of the amount is going to be equal to $8,320. So this would be the very final answer using the unitary method. Now, do we have to use this method? I don't think we actually have to use this method. Let me run down neatly here. We don't have to use this method, but this method is going to be useful when? When we have a calculator and when the numbers are a bit strange. So say they give you 13% or they give you 17% or 29 then you might say, oh yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. I can't really do it. Well, you're absolutely right here, guys. You could have multiplied by four. Uh, and then I have one more example, just one more to show you here. And here we go, example eight. Yes, here it's always the same process. We go to 1% and from 1% we go to 100%. Okay, guys, last example, let's do this. So we know 18% of the students are in year eight, 16% of the students are in year nine. Okay, so let's try to understand what they're saying. They're saying we have 18% of students in year eight. Okay, eyes on the board, everyone, let's focus here. So they're saying 18% of students in the school are in year eight, and those students are actually equal to 126. Let's keep that in mind. And then they're saying we have 16% of students in year nine, and we don't know how much that is. How many students are there in year nine? So let's try to put things in perspective. We know 18% of students, well, that is equal to 126. The question is, what is 16% of students here? That is the question. They're saying 16% of students are in year nine. How many are there in year nine? So let me just make a note here on the right. We have year eight students. So what I wrote down in blue, it represents year eight students. And what I wrote down in pink represents year nine students. So they said, I'm giving you the year eight students. Let's now calculate how many year nine students we have. And I can see a hand up. I think oh. is already uh, eager to tell us how he would do it. Is that it? Oh. Yes. 
Excellent. Excellent. Nicely done. Oh. Get a reward point for this. Excellent. So we know 18% is equal to 126. So what did he say? He said, let's divide this by 18 to get 1%. So 1% is going to be equal to 126 divided by 18. So what is 126 divided by 18? Let's see. 126 divided by 18. That gives us 7. So feel free to use a calculator for this, guys. It's a bit tricky to do in our heads. And now from this, we get to 16% by multiplying by 16. So 16% will be equal to, well, 7 times 16. Let's see. 7 times 16 simply gives 112. So we know that 7 times 16 will be equal to 112, meaning that... 16% is actually equal to 112 students. So this would be 112 students in year nine. So notice the difference between this and the previous problem was in the previous problem, we were looking for 100%, but in this one, we were actually looking for a different percentage. So we went from 18% to 16%. So that would be an interesting approach because this approach you can always use in any problem you ever get. You can always find 1% and then from that, the sky is the limit. Yes. So let's wrap it up with the examples, guys, and move on to some practice. Everyone, give it a go. Yes, you can use a calculator. Please use a calculator for this. Yes, let's do it.